Hello, Bournemouth fans. Happy Monday. Hope you are doing all right. So after our 4-1 win over the Sky Blues on Saturday at Dean Court, that made it four wins on the trot. AFC Bournemouth are away on Tuesday night. It's the rearranged game up in Yorkshire against Huddersfield Town. It's at half past five where I'm sure the Cherries are going to try to keep that run going. To preview it for the next five or so minutes, we've got uh, Tom Jordan. Tom, you all right? Good. Same shirt as yesterday, Tom. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I just, I just I sleep in it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Neil is here as well. Neil, are you right? Yeah, no, I've not changed either. <laughs> no, no, nor have I. Do the <laughs> until we lose. I'm not going to change until we lose. And how are you, Jeff? You're right. Yeah, good thinking. Good thinking, Neil. And Huddersfield Town, Tom, you were one of the lucky ones to be there at the reverse where we battered them 5 0, hoping for a repeat tomorrow night, eh? Yeah, yeah, it seems like so long ago. But um, I remember at the time, it felt like, I know they did rest a lot of players. It felt like they turned up and thought, we ain't going to beat Bournemouth. And it was really, it was really odd. Um, but yeah, we really put them to the to the sword that day. It was some, some really good stuff. Um, I remember Jack Simpson having a really good game at the back as well. And we were really playing from the back and it was uh, he's not even with the club anymore. So, um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully more of the same. But um, I think both teams are, are slightly different from, from them. It does feel like so long ago. But um, yeah, it was a, uh, a nice fixture because it was the one of the only two that we could go and watch. So, um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed that. And hopefully, it, uh, annoyingly, it seems like a bit of a banker, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? If, if I want a Bournemouth fan, I go, well, that's an obvious Bournemouth win. So let's just hope that we just get the job done. Yeah, it's the first of three away games in a row. So after that, we've got Norwich, then Millwall. What's your, what's your points return, ideally, from that? I mean, nine, obviously, Neil, but what would you be OK with? Uh... I would be happy with six, I think. So we've got the Philip Billing relegation derby on Tuesday, as I like to call it. Yeah. The uh, the um, so both these relegated sides fronting off against each other. Um, I think I'm sure he'll be central uh, to it. I bet it's a shame the fans aren't there because I think he'd probably love to to play up there. Um, I'd I'd like to think we can we can win that and win away at Millwall. I think Norwich might be a step beyond us because they might need to win for the championship and they, they, they look on good form at their, on their own patch, don't they? So um, I, I think six six points would be great. And Jeff, Huddersfield Town's last four games have ended in draws. The first of those four was a one all against Birmingham City, then a draw with Cardiff, which was nil-nil, then a one all against playoff hopefuls Brentford and their latest game, nil-nil against Rotherham. So, bit topsy-turvy, really. I mean, you'd look at the one-all against Brentford and think that's pretty good. But then Brentford haven't been great of late until the last fixture that they played. But then do you think they'll still be smarting after that away 7-0 annihilation at Carrow Road? Surely are. Surely the uh, the response from the team should have been yesterday against Rotherham. I mean, if, they, if any game was a six-pointer, that was it. And, and Rotherham were really unlucky not to win that game. So I'm not sure that the players have really got that out of the system quite yet. And the last thing they want is to see us coming up with the uh, attacking flair that we've got and, you know, threaten to give them a, another beating. So... A tough times for Huddersfield at the moment. Probably a really good time to play them. Um, they've still got a they've still got a tough run in. Um, they've got Rotherham breathing down their necks. So um, they are also a team that crumbled to us when we played them at the Vitality. So we we know we can we know we can score goals against them, and uh, they are not looking great. No. Players for Huddersfield that missed their last game through injury was uh, Harry Toffolo, the back injury, uh, Nias Hamstring, uh, Vallejo with a head, uh, Schindler with a knee injury and Danny Grant with a thigh injury. Uh, Josh Coroma, Alex Pritchard and um, Aiting are back in training and Pritchard's one that you obviously know, Tom. Yeah, he was always. I was at Brentford, wasn't it, when we uh, went yeah. out first time around and we were linked with him a few times. I think he was originally Tottenham. Um, but yeah, he's always looked like a tidy player, but he seems to have gone off the radar a little bit. Um, I mean, I know they've got Tommy Elphick. It'll be be nice if he... I mean, he's getting... I think he got, got on the bench the other day. I'm not sure when it was. I'm sure I saw something about him, you know, getting back to fitness. I, I might have, to be fair, it might have been for... I just saw it on Twitter. It might have been like a development game where he got back out there, which was nice to see. Just saw lately that they got Sonogo, or I remember at Arsenal. Um, yeah, weird one. And then they've got, like you mentioned there, Nias, who was a... I think he scored... Scored against uh, against us when he was either at Everton or Hull, maybe, um, yeah. in the Premier League. 
they've got Fraser Campbell as well. So they've got like some really kind of weird names that you think, where are they playing now? They're all at Huddersfield by the looks of it. But um, yeah, it'd be an interesting game. Like I say, when we played them before, I, I felt like they didn't come with enough belief, to be honest with you. Um, and they should have had a bit more of a go. I'm not really sure what to expect from them because the only time we played in the season, like I say, it was pretty um, self-explanatory. But yeah, I'm sure they'll they'll sure they'll look at that and go, look, we lost 5-0 to them last time. Let's not, do you know what I mean? A bit of pride at stake here. Let's give them a, give them a game and show them what we're all about. I think what's weird is we're going to hope to beat them um, on Tuesday and then we're going to be supporting Huddersfield for the remainder of the season because I think, like Jeff said, they've got a lot of the a lot of the teams in and around us, haven't they? They're, they've. I remember when we've done our uh, thing with predicting all the results, Huddersfield have played a lot of the teams, if not yeah, all oh, of the yeah, teams. Right, yeah. So um, we could do with them picking up after Tuesday. Right then, so what we're going to do then, we're going to go through the team as we usually do and let's see if we can predict the starting lineup. and uh, we'll start up. Tom, this is a difficult one, but I don't know who your goalie's going to be. Will Dennis has looked good in training. Um, I'll give him that. Um, no, I'll give it, a, give it to Asmir for this one, I think. Yeah, OK. I mean, is it a case of just going through the motions with this back four, Neil? Yeah. I mean, we know, right? Yeah. It is. He won't change. Jonathan Woodgate will not change a back four. He's a, he's a defender himself. He will overemphasize the the need for back fours to be settled and probably correctly so. Uh, so unless any of them have picked up a knock that we're not aware of, it will be the same back four. Yeah. Okay. And then we come into midfield, Jeff. And uh, I think Neil on the um, on the podcast recently, the second look, he uh, sort of alluded to the fact that one player tends to play the away games and one at home. But I mean, Lerner's always in there. Um, Philip Billing is always in there. But who else? Well, I think Pearson will replace Wilshire mm -hmm. for this game. So I'd call him player six and yeah. or player seven and Lerma. Um, yeah. Those are going to be the two sort of central midfielders. Yeah. OK, brilliant. And, you know, for Huddersfield, you know, Philip Billing is going to be one to watch. I mean, Tom, do you know much about what uh, their play, their sort of fans uh, tended to think of like Phil Bill? Have they got the same opinion as we have? It seems to be a lot of similarities at times because I remember them when we got them. They said, oh, he's a, he's a good player when he wants to. And then he just goes for the most of them when we were in the, the scrap at the bottom. He didn't want to know and he'd just go missing. And they often described him as a luxury player, which I think we've, you know, right now we think he's the best thing we've ever seen. But I think we'd all agree that we thought that a lot of times as well. But maybe he's one of them players, and it seems like under Woodgate, Woodgate's put an arm around him and said, "Look, you're our, you're, we 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 want you in the number ten role. You want you to be kind of the main man. Go and show us what you can do." And he's he's doing it now. So um, at the moment, we're seeing a, a billing on top form. But yeah, um, I don't think they like the way he kind of forced. He almost forced himself out. He said, you know, I right. should be in the Premier League when they think he didn't really help him to try and stay up. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're very fond of him. I think fans, if fans were back there, I think he probably would have got a few boos, um, as far as I'm aware. But um, couldn't care less. He's going to score against them, I'll tell you that. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Um, and then our attacking three, then Neil. The well, just one more thing on Philip Billing. He was superb yeah. against us. There was a game when we played yes. Huddersfield in this. It was in, in December, and I remember we beat them two one. But they absolutely played us off the park they in the did. first half, especially. And he was uh, obviously he's a kind of player that stands out. You don't forget him because he doesn't look. You know, he hasn't got like a haircut like everyone else. He doesn't look like every other midfielder. And he was superb that day. So that was one of the games we did turn it on. Back to this point, front three. Um, will be the front three, I think, that play. As long as Brooksy got through it, all right. Yeah. Um, Dan Jew Magic will definitely start. Um, yeah. And uh, as long as Brooksy got through it, all right, uh, he'll play. Um, he's probably the only one that you you might wonder if, um, if Stan's fit, whether or not he thinks, I don't want to play him three times in seven days. Um, but as it stands, I would say yes. Yeah. OK, so there we go. There is our side. And to be fair, you know, based on our confidence, we seem to be exuding it and it seems to be transmitting all around the squad. Uh, Jeff, your prediction is going to be a positive one, I presume, right? 2-0 to us. 2-0. So we're not going to be flying, but, you know, 2-0. Um, uh, you know, what do you want to see? I mean, obviously just a win. You know, does it really matter how it comes for you or, you know, like ideally it will come with a decent performance? 
It, it can be as uh, as messy and unspectacular as that Blackburn one. I think just get the win. It, it's a game we, we need to win to keep momentum going, and we really should win out of the six fixtures we've got left. Left. This is a three points to us game. And if we don't play quite so well, I think that will help in the motivation for the Norwich game. The last thing we want to do is to play Huddersfield off the park and then think, oh, we can we can mm. beat Norwich. We need to be on our game for that Norwich match. I'm going for a, I'm going for a two one. I don't think it's going to be amazingly close, and I I kind of in some ways think we need that uh, just to maybe keep us in check. But we need to get the three points. Tom, I'll go in the middle of both here because I was thinking three one. So um, I do think we'll concede. I, I still at the moment, even like with that uh, Coventry game where we look quite comfortable, we still do feel like we can say it's only when I was thinking about their players then and Sonogo, I don't really know much about. I just know he's massive. Um, and I just, I don't know if this Nias will be fit or things like that. I think oh, they're going to chuck some balls in, aren't they? And yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if we conceded a silly header or something. Um, but I, I think we'll have too much for him. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go... Going to go 3-1, I think. I do think Phil Bill will score. Oh, yeah. And I agree with what Neil said as well when we talk about the front three. I think he'll want to play Brooks, but we've got to appreciate he's been out for a, a long period of time now. And it's not a week. You know what I mean? It's only a few days he's got to play again. So I think it'll, if he were to miss out, it'll only be because of that, you know, just that recovery time and things like that. So, but I feel like worst case scenario when he can't play, it sounds like Stan will be ready. So that's not too bad. But um, yeah, I, I think we'll have too much for him. Similar to the Coventry game, I think it will be. But yeah, I'm going to go 3-1, Slanky to score back-to-back, uh, Phil Billing and a bit of Danji Magic. Danji Magic. Neil? I'm with you, Sam. So I, I, I think they've drawn a lot of games. Uh, so I think we'll win, but I don't think it will win by many. And I always think we'll concede. So I'm going 2-1. Sorry, it'd be boring. Two people having the same scoreline, but 2-1, I think. Okay. And I also think Solanke will get that Kirk Toby hoodoo off his back. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he lies awake at night thinking about that. <laughs> I bet he does. I bet yeah, he does. He does. Oh, I love it. Okay, well, yeah. Let us know what you think with your predictions in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you're going to say. It's at half past five. It's on AFCB TV. But also, Tom, there's a there's a cheeky little watch along going on in there. Yeah, there might be, mate. Yeah, I might tell off. Uh, what is it? With Back of the Net Productions, 100% watch along record. record. Oh, it's mental after that third goal. I went crazy. Yeah, we saw, mate, we saw. So, yeah. Um, Did you hopefully... watch the Southampton game together then? Yeah, but it was it, it wasn't it wasn't the same, was it? It wasn't we didn't it wasn't just with back of the net. We've done it in partnership, right. so we're still right. you know we can still work this that it's hundred percent, all right? 100% in the league right. as well. League, yeah, in the league, league yeah. in the league, right? Yeah, I'm not, I might get I might get changed before that. Actually, I've all this for two days. <laughs> yeah, of course you have. Uh, gents, thank you very much, Neil. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you very much. See you soon. Uh, yeah, nice one. See you very soon. You out. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. And yeah, as I said, leave your predictions uh, below. And yeah, see you for the watch on tomorrow. Love the cherries.